So if you can't get down there, another trend to look at, of course, and a very big trend at the moment is tiki. I mean, I am a huge tiki fan, I'm a tiki geek, and I think it's the one true cocktail culture. Started off in bars in the 1930s and just about invaded every single possible fact set of life, including, unfortunately, clothes, gentlemen. Uh, you're <laughs> Like, you know, Don the Beach Gamer, Ernest Raymond Bowman Gant. You know, this guy was theoretically single-handedly responsible for selling 325,000 cases of rum a year. This is a man who, as I say, used to do a Don's Pearl. Great drink, but every tenth one would have a real pearl in it. This is a real character who, when it started raining, or when his bar started to thin out, would go into the back, get a hose, and spray it up on the roof so it sounded like it was raining, so nobody wanted to leave his bar. It's a very polite way to think, to really sort of spread this message, and as Kiki expanded, so the quality of drinks got worse and worse, more premixes, more secret recipes that got lost when these guys died, and it became rather sort of tacky, tacky tiki. It's now coming back. People like Jeff Berry have done an awful lot of research. The wide range of runs The wide range of runs that are now out there mean that you no longer have to just reach for a light rum or a dark rum. I started bartending in England in 2 BC, it's two years before cranberry juice, and it's <laughs> In those days, we didn't have rums in Guatemala, Trinidad, Nicaragua, Venezuela, etc. We had light rum, we had dark rum, and we made the best we could do with that. Now you've got the Jamaicans, you've got the Trinidadians, you've got the Puerto Ricans, etc. And you can really start to, using the recipes that Jeff's done, start to get back to really good quality tiki drinks. And you know, it doesn't matter how hardballed and cynical you are, you can't help but smile if somebody gives you a drink, you know, a bit of coconut or a pineapple, using really good fresh ingredients. And so tiki drinks, whether it's you know the Mai Tai, which is not just a, you know, dressed up, you know, it's not just a sort of Polynesian fruit bowl with absolutely every single fruit juice and rum variant you can put in there in a silly glass with, hey, let's throw some cocktail junk on the top of it as well. It is really a quality Mai Tai, it's a truly spectacular drink, and as I say, having made one of these ones from using a 1944, 17-year-old rum, you do realise that the rums in the olden days that the cocktails come from were significantly different. I mean, Jamaica didn't get its first continuous still until the mid-60s, so before that, if it said Jamaican rum, it was going to be far more full body. The colour of this was a bright red. That's it. You can see why they now use grenadine, because you couldn't get that colour. Even using a 21-year-old Appleton, still a fantastic drink, but it's not quite what it was before. But Tiki, I think, is finally getting some of the interest that it deserves, and more and more younger bartenders are getting into it, doing the research, etc., and producing some spectacular drinks, and hopefully, you will be safe to say, go into a tiki bar and ask a bartender for a drink in there. 